what can we do to be excellent at those calls right now and get a win, whether it's even if it's just a five star review or a, or a club membership or or whatever it is um, and or that they recommend us to a friend or family member. Now we get that win, we celebrate that win and we start to create momentum for ourselves. What's up to the point listeners? It's your boy, Chris flying solo today, I guess with the exception of my guest that's on here too, but no, no Chad, just me. That's okay. Because I can do this by myself. I'm not afraid. <laughs> We're going to rock it. It's been, it actually, you know, I'm recording this a little bit later in the day. It's been a, a, a quite a long day. I got an early flight to catch tomorrow. Um, I'm, I'm excited for the episode. I know I say it all the time. I'm excited for it. Um, you know, in, in this one in particular, uh, it's going to be a little extra exciting for me because it's our guest's first time being a guest on a podcast. You've done these before internally with your, with your team, but like, this is your first time being a guest on the podcast, man. Are you excited, nervous, all the above? I'm excited, man. I'm ready to, ready to bring the fire for you and your listeners. Well, I, I am too, man. I'm excited for what you have to share too. And, and guys, like, listen, this isn't just, you know, this isn't just some regular guy. This is the pride of Pomona high school. Go red devils. <laughs> <laughs> red devils. There's the Panthers, man. I don't know who the hell the, who the, hell's the Panthers. Oh, Where's Pomona? Goodness. Where's Pomona high school? Pomona high school is in Arvada, Colorado, just North of Denver. Well, shout out to Pomona High School in California to the Red Devils, but uh, oh, you did your you, you did your research. You're going back, so well, yeah, because as I'm going back and trying to look at the at the history, you know, actually, let me just back up for a listener for just a second. So, so I have Brian Remington on here, who's a general manager. Brian Remington on from general manager of On Time Experts down in DFW, uh, HVAC Plumbing, uh, but kind of been all over the place, right? And, and one of the things that um, I I wanted to bring on Brian for is is not just that I've been able to, like I've been able to spend some time with Brian and thankfully they're also a client of ours. So I get to, to work with them, but it's what I've heard from others, you know, um, about what you have a superpower in and you have a superpower in, um, you know, in training and, uh, developing and man, you know, developing leaders and, and managers, two different things, by the way. Uh, you know, and like some, maybe some different tactics, some different looks at those that the listeners might be like, oh, okay, yeah, that's, that's different. Like I have not heard it done that way. Like that's the hope of this whole thing, right? Is they can take maybe one thing away that you've done differently and had the success with, cause you've had some great success, but, um, before, and I actually, I think I got some really good questions on here, um, that are going to be super thought provoking, um, and, and maybe even a little challenging, right? Cause sometimes we have to lead through chaos. Sometimes we have to uh, train leaders on how they can make it through chaotic situations. Maybe you are listening right now and you're in one of those chaotic situations, <laughs> especially if you're in a, a market with fall, like a true fall market. And it's like, oh, okay, it's maintenance agreement time. Um, or maybe your summer wasn't as great as you thought it was going to be. Well, <laughs> all these things. So maybe, maybe, you, maybe you feel that a little bit. But um, one thing you can control is – uh, you know, your training, your staff, how you, you know, how you're managing people, how your leadership style, can you continuously grow, you know, and being a manager, can you continuously grow and being a leader and lead other people to be better? Like maybe we get back to some of those things where, right, where, you know, while business is slowing down a little bit, cause you know, everybody's going to blame marketing anyway, that's slow. So why not, why not just get back to training? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, but Brian, you know, what's interesting is as I'm doing a little bit of uh, research on you and I do want you to share a little bit of, of, uh, your past and, 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 but and we'll, we'll burn through it quick, but it's interesting because I think it plays well to the entire, um, this entire episode and how it's developed you into being this exceptional, you know, trainer, you know, and head coach. So you, cause you had some previous coaching skills, man. Like you, I, whenever I went back and looked at, um, just some of the, you bounced around the United States, man, <laughs> you went, I saw that uh, when, whenever you came out, I forget when it was, this, this might've been in the beginning of the year. I can't, or maybe even last year when you came out and we had lunch. Yeah. End of last year. That was okay. And we were yeah. talking about, I didn't know you were the head strength and conditioning coach at um, or FAU, right? At Florida Atlantic. Yes, sir. That's crazy. And then I saw that you also went to uh, university of Buffalo for a stint. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then also university of Northern Colorado. That would makes a little bit more sense to me. Yeah. But uh, you're bouncing around, dude. Like, 
it's uh you just get, you didn't know where you wanted to go you're like you know what buffalo sounds great let's go, no, let's go. definitely doesn't work like that <laughs> yeah and uh in coaching uh you know it's uh at the time there was only 121 division one schools out there so if a spot opens up and it's kind of the next next level for you you go whether it's whether it's in Phoenix, at ASU, or whether, hey, the next opportunity is in Buffalo, New York, you're getting a U-Haul and you're going to take the next step up the ladder. So um, I had to get, you know, I grew up thinking I'd never leave Colorado. And when I decided I wanted to get into coaching and was done playing, um, it, the reality set in pretty quick. If I want to stay in coaching, I got to be willing to go anywhere. And so I was tested very early on in my career with that. <laughs> okay, so we're going to get into a little bit of that too, because I think that's going to play into everything. But I want to mention just one thing to our listeners, just to kind of give you some perspective. Um, you know, I'm just going to share a few of your numbers with you. And if I get them wrong, just you could totally call me out on here and, and it's okay. But I think I think I got it right. So you grew uh, Fix It in Denver from just under $2 million to about $19 million in a three-year span. Is that correct? Am I right yes, so far? Sir. Yes, okay, sir. then uh, down in D uh, Dallas Fort Worth with on time experts um, from 19 to 30 million again, oh, 12 in three years. 12. Well, 12, 12, sitting at 12 for like for like four or five years or something like that, was it? And then you were able to, take yeah, when we when we bought it, they had five years straight around between 12 and 13 million in our first year, 19, last year, 25, and this year we'll clear 30. Got it. Okay, so so. Yeah. That's that's perfect. What I was trying to show there too is there's just been consistent growth around things you've been a part of and been leading and been coaching and training and doing all these things in. And I wanted our listeners to kind of have not just an idea of where you guys sit up, you know, uh, from a revenue perspective, but just like how it's progressed over these past three years. So it wasn't like, hey, man, we just went from 19 to 30 in 2021. And like, you know, like that's bullshit. Like we're not riding that wave. It's it's like, <laughs> hey, what last year and this year look like? 100%. You know, I think that tells a different story. Uh, so, so yeah, man, like you, you, you have a, a fantastic track record. And so I wanted our listeners to hear that. And some of the things, the questions I'm going to ask him today are like how he led, managed and coached all the way through this process where it had been fantastic or, and when we're in an order taking business and now where we're just trying to mm. get back to some basics. So, so that's the plan. You ready? Let's go. Let's okay. go. So let's take a little step back then and share kind of, you know, share with our listeners just a little bit of, of your come up. Yeah. So, uh, you mentioned I was, I was in the world of division one athletics coaching. Uh, I was the youngest head strength and conditioning coach in D one, uh, been friends with George for a long time. And, uh, he was growing a business in Cali and we'd always stayed in touch and, you know, over time, he started talking about how he was growing this thing and how hard it was to find leaders. He, and uh, conversations got more serious. I was going through some challenging stuff personally, and it kind of cracked the door open and really just reevaluated life, you know, from being in D1 athletics, you know, you're on the road a lot, you're working 90, 100 hour weeks. And I couldn't imagine really settling down and having a good home life and having a family uh, with that type of lifestyle. And so really what I decided was most important to me was, was have a great home life, great marriage, have kids where I can go to their games uh, and just be involved. And a lot of my mentors and coaching didn't have that. And so uh, George, I, I flew out and saw George and kind of saw what he was doing. And then I realized, well, hey, this is a lot like coaching. It's, it's different. I'm not in a weight room or out on the field, but um, it's helping people become better versions of themselves. And uh, for me, it's all about having impact. So, um, you know, left, left everything behind, burned the boats as they speak, as they say, and, and moved out to Cali with, uh, and ever, everyone in my life thought I was crazy. Wait, I got my master's degree in physiology and, youngest head strength coach in D1 and and really was on my way. And I left all that. They're like, wait, you're going to California to, to sell air conditioners? Like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? Like, everyone thought I was going crazy. So how, hey, how old were you then, Brian? I was, gosh, that was 2012, January 2012. So I was 
20, 28, almost 29. And you yeah. said, you said all that hard work and I'm going to go sell air conditioners for George. <laughs> yeah. Donaldson. By the way, for our listeners, he's, he's referencing George Donaldson fix it, uh, fix 24 seven group, been on the podcast before been to Rhino X before a friend of ours, client of ours, good guy. So that's who he's talking about when he's talking. Yeah. About yeah. So I, uh, you know, George is like, look, I can teach you the business, but he's a big believer in, uh, leaders are born. And when you have that leadership trait and that he can, he can help you become a better leader. But, um, so anyways, he's like, you can't do anything unless you prove you can sell. So I, I went to success Academy in St. Louis for two days and had to memorize a bunch of stuff and came back and thought I was ready to sell air conditioners. And, uh, boy, was I wrong. Um, my, my second lead I ever ran, I got kicked out of the house cause I wouldn't give a price for a three ton within the first 10 minutes. And I went back to my truck and was contemplating life, man. Like, what did I just get myself into? I've never sold anything. Like, what am I doing? And, uh, called, uh, my GM at the time, Rick Kubis, who's, who's one of our GMs in our group down oh, there thanks. in Phoenix. And I said, Hey man, I, I don't know what I'm doing. Like I, I I'm, I'm reevaluating everything. I, I think I made a bad choice. And so you're gonna have to give that last lead to somebody else. And uh, he goes, no, I need you to run it. Um, but uh, here's what I want you to do. I want you to leave that binder with all them tabs. I want you to leave it in the car and uh, go in, do what you do best, make a friend. You'll remember what you remember. You'll forget what you forget. And uh, that's all I want you to do. And, uh, you know, hour and a half, two hours later, I walked out with a $13,000 sale and I was like, okay, I think I can do this. <laughs> and, uh, you know, a couple months after that, uh, George had a change in leadership in his Los Angeles branch, uh, went out there to run that business. And he said, are you ready? And I said, yeah, I'm ready. And I was not ready. Um, <laughs> I got my ass kicked for about nine months, uh, a lot of like legit tears and frustration and stress, a lot of money being lost. And, you know, George trusted me though. He said, look, I trust that, you know, he, he was helping me and Rick was helping me, but like, you're going to figure it out. And so after about nine months of missing budget finally hit and then never missed in LA from that point on for another 18 months, got promoted, was GM in Orange County, grew that business. And then uh, when George uh, left uh, the group there, um, he retired for six months, uh, went and worked for Leland actually for a few months at Service Champions. And uh, that's where I thought I was just going to be there in Southern California. And then uh, after three or four months, George said, hey, I'm bored. Let's do something. And, uh, you know, once you've worked for George, it's hard to work for anybody else. And I say, what do you think? And he's like, well, let's go back home. Let's go to Denver. And he said, by, by we, I mean you, uh, <laughs> you need to take your, your family, your wife and kids and, and go. And, um, he gave me an opportunity I couldn't refuse. So, uh, that was, that was a wild situation out there. No customer base. They only did apartment maintenances. We had to build a base from nothing. We had to build a brand. And like you said, multifamily maintenance was the, yes. was the game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Low margin. You know, we had eight employees. Our phone system was a cordless phone. And, uh, you know, I was used to working with big companies who had, everybody did things. I had an install manager, a call center manager, I had all that. You go, you take me out of service champions and, uh, plop me in there. And I'm like, okay, I, I bet, guess I better learn how to outbound so I can teach my two girls how to outbound and uh, go and run leads. And then, okay, now I got to order the equipment. I'd never done that before. I have to go pull the permit. Never done that before. Um, go pick up the equipment and take it to my installers. Never done that before. I remember walking through the warehouse at Carrier. People asking me, like, what are you doing? Like, why are you back here? I didn't know where to go, um, but figured it out. And, you know, is that rest is history. That's Low Miller, right? Yeah. Low Miller. Yep. Yep. That's the distributor. <laughs> I've been there. Yeah. So yeah. it's been a wild ride and, you know, we uh, built that thing and partnered up with, uh, with our group and, and wanted to grow and moved my family here to Dallas, bought a amazing company down here. Uh, owner had been in place for a long time. Randy Kelly really 
built a good, solid, stable business. Um, great team here. So it's kind of pull Randy out, plop me in, and uh, really proud that nobody quit. Uh, everybody bought into the vision uh, of what we wanted to do and uh, and just went off to the races from there. So, so the, one, thanks for sharing. Um, yeah. It is, it, it is uh, an interesting move to go from service champions, a very secure job to go do your thing and figure out how to pull a permit and go get equipment and like doing all your own thing. Everybody thought I was crazy then too. <laughs> because it sounds crazy. That's yeah. why people thought that. Um, but like you, obviously you probably learned a ton that, you know, just from having gone through all that, that's, that's helped, you know, it, you can, there's not a lot that you could say you haven't done when 100%. you're thing, you know? Um, so, you know, in order to continue to scale and like grow these businesses and, and I mean, Dallas Fort Worth is a ridiculously competitive market. Um, and I would even say this year, th this year has also been an absolute grind and it's expensive. Yes. It's an expensive market because their competition is big and there's a lot of still a lot of private equity money floating around down in there too. Uh, but it's just a crazy competitive market. And, um, you know, and so you have to be able to lead people through, like I sort of said earlier, you know, the slow seasons, the hard stuff, the, um, yeah, cause it's slow. You've got different challenges, right? Like you got people sitting, well, now there's a, a potential of somebody you, you losing good employees or losing people. But, you know, in order to, to continue to scale, like you have, like I think you said, you know, 30 million is kind of where we'll, well, you'll end up at, uh, yeah. this year, I think is about that. Yeah. I think all in, all in fix it group was around just on just sub 100, just sub 100, right? Somewhere around there. Yeah. We're, we're pacing to hit pretty, pretty conservative estimate will be like 97, 98 million this year. Okay. So, okay, cool. So yeah. to do that though, you have to, you know, this is when you also have to have good leadership and good management in place, right. To continue to scale. Yeah. So, so are, you know, because this is something that you've really kind of like, even through your twenties, you, you've, you've always been a coach. And so you, I'm assuming you'll recognize these things, but like, what are some of these key leadership qualities that you focus on when you're training? Um, I don't, whether it's leaders, managers, like if you, if you look at those two things, like your program is different, but like, what are some of the, what are some of the key leadership qualities that you focus on when training? Well, uh, I think first and foremost, one thing I've learned is, you know, you got to you got to hire the right person. Well, we can we can do every personality test and interviews and all of us listen. I can I'm sure we can recount many misfires. Um, I think the first thing you have to have right is your own company culture, uh, because you can put the right person in the wrong environment. and They're not going to they're not going to succeed. And so really, really making sure that we know who we are and, and what we stand for and what our values are. And then we, we hire in accordance with that. And also who can help us, help us go to the next level. Um, you, Brian, do you ask, sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. Do you, so uh, interesting you say that it's hard to hire for culture because some people are really good interviewers, right? And, and, do you, are there any questions that you guys ask in particular to see around some, maybe some of your values to kind of like get them to talk about what, maybe what some of their, you know, values are and to, to Matt, like how, how do you go about that in that interview process to try and like identify that person fits the culture besides just to what you're experiencing from yeah. their face, face? I think in some ways I find myself almost trying to talk them out of it. <laughs> if that makes sense, because you know, we can make it sound like, oh, this is the greatest place and we got everything figured out and dialed in. But it's almost like discussing the the really challenging stuff and the, when when things are hard and when they go bad and and really trying to get a sense of how they respond to adversity and and really how hard it is running one of these businesses. I, I tell my you know, we have general managers and training in my in my business. We have a number of my my sales manager, service manager, they're all going to be GMs. Uh, the number one quality you have to have is resilience and to, to make it in this game. And so, you know, no matter how shitty today was, you got to wake up tomorrow, put your feet on the floor and get back after it. And so really asking a lot of questions centered around resilience and give us examples of like things that you've been through. And also 
what your why is. I know it's, it's kind of cliche, you know, it's kind of an overused thing is you got to have a big why, but if you don't have a big why, the why not's always going to be bigger. And oh, so, especially when it's hard, especially when it's hard, especially when it's hard. Right. So really trying to get an understanding of those two things and not being shy about who we are, what our values, what we stand for. And, and if that's not a good fit, like it's not gonna be good for either of us. And, uh, and so we're, we're almost, uh, especially in management and leadership, we'll do, it's, it's kind of ridiculous. We do almost three or four rounds of interviews, not to waste people's time, but to make darn sure that we're not going to have a misfire because, you know, we, we put, we invest a lot of money into training and time and development. And if that thing's a misfire, that's a, that's a, that's a huge hit and yeah. we can't have that. Yeah, I'm guessing, you know, most everybody's experienced something along those lines because that's how you also learn from it <laughs> is yeah. you know, how to ask and do things differently. It, it is frustrating when you pour a bunch of time and money and effort into someone and care and then they and then they leave and take that elsewhere. It is frustrating. Yes. Um. So, so the, OK, well, but let me just ask a question because you're kind of talking about, you know, you got to be resilient. Um. And I think that that's actually a, a great word because. Uh, no matter what business you're in, I don't care what trade it is. This is trade agnostic. You're going to go through that rough patch uh, without question because you have growth, growing pains too. So like there's those, those things that happen too, but, but there is very chaotic moments, especially if you're in um, HVAC. I feel like that there's always more in that, in that world because of the seasonality of the business and the competitiveness of the competitiveness of the business. But how do you prepare your managers to lead and make critical decisions like during those high stress situations where like shit's chaotic? You said you got to get back up day two, put <laughs> your shoes back on and get back after it. Like, you know, it, it's hard to train and like to train a situation. And sometimes it's like you once you're in it is when you're learning at like you're learning at lightning speed because now you're in the thick of it and you're having to make decisions. I'm like you, man. Like you having to just figure shit out when you get to, <laughs> okay, I guess I'm going to figure out how to do this. But how, like, do you, is there, is there something that you do to prepare your managers to lead in those situations? I think, I think it's really putting things into two boxes, the things that are within your control and the things that are not within your control and okay. focusing on being excellent at the things you can control. Um, I think, you know, Exam when I look at, give me some examples. So, uh, really our behaviors, our actions and our thoughts. I think those are the, the two things that we, we, you and I both, we have a hundred percent control over what we think about, what we do, what we say and being excellent there and how we talk to people. We all get negative thoughts, but, but how do we, how do we counteract that? And how do we, how do we, uh, flip our perspective? That's something that's constructive and positive. Uh, we work on that a lot. The things that we can control in our business, all the the building blocks to success. You know, at the end of the day, there's only a few things that if we get those things right, more days than not, we're going to win. So focus on, you know, an HVAC. How many ops do we have on the board? If we don't have enough ops, what are we going to do to get more ops? Um, who's Who's running those ops, right? The right guys are running the ops. And then how are we executing on those ops? But But all this is behavioral. And if we like here in our business, we we coach behaviors. You'll rarely hear me come into a meeting or any of my managers where we're talking about our close rate is this or our this KPI is this or this KPI is that. We focus on the behaviors that lead to those really excellent KPIs. And we coach to that, we train to those behaviors, and and more importantly, celebrate those behaviors because we can all have 100% control of our behaviors and nothing is 100%. But if I'm disciplined and I'm consistent with the behaviors that lead to excellence, that lead to success, I'm going to win. And I, and I have to trust that. That's the other part is sometimes we only want to do it when we're guaranteed the result. And oh, yeah, I'll only go above and beyond or I'll only give we call it legendary service if if I'm guaranteed the win on this call. But really the what we always talk about is hey if we're if we are legendary and we give this client far more than what they can far more than what they've paid for far more than what it costs them 
and and we trust that in the end you know over our body of work it's going to work out for us then then it does but when it becomes this i'm only going to do this if i guaranteed this in return now it becomes it, uh it, it's like a limited mindset and hey just be excellent at the things you can control and trust it's going to work and it's kind of countercultural or, or sometimes um, you know, it, it goes against the way most people think, but, um, but the more that we can do that and internally, as we celebrate those behaviors, um, now we get our team focused on those things and the wins just happen. The revenue growth happens. The profit happens as a result of that. Got it. So you're just saying, Hey, if we, if we just continue to focus on the behavior, the rest is going to shake out. Way it's yeah. supposed to, yeah, and there's gonna be a success. Okay, hundred so, percent. Yeah, which is always hard if you're like thinking about right now, like what <laughs> do right now. Well, maybe that's that's not your answer for right now. That's just a, a long term solution. Well, it's it, it's hey, what's what's on my you know? If we're getting nitty gritty, and if I've got if I've got you know only let's say I got half of my guys sitting at home, which we don't have, but let's just say we do, and I only got a few calls on my board okay, how can we, what can we do to be excellent at those calls right now and get a win, whether it's, even if it's just a five-star review or a, or a club membership or, or whatever it is, um, and, or that they recommend us to a friend or family member. Now we get that win, we celebrate that win and we start to create momentum for ourselves. And now we're focused on the wins, no matter how big or small, instead of, what's not there or this or that it's focused on the most important thing that's in front of us right now. Got it. Hey, so then let me ask a question around morale. Cause you know, in situations like that, it's easy when we're sitting here talking about it, but you know, mm -hmm. some people like, you know, they, they get, they get defeated yeah, and, and then they can't like, then that day is done. Like they're done that day. And you, it's, you know, your job as a, a leader to, you know, coach them through uh, how to deal with that. Cause just because we say it, you know, and give them the, you know, the, the tips to over, you know, to, to have, you know, the, the mental fortitude to make it through, like people break down, you know, For sure. like people, people, people break down. So do you guys do any sort of like, you know, training on like, Hey, when you got, when one of your employees hits this negative thing, here's what you coach to like, and, and is that uh situational? Is it like, I mean, I'm just, you know, is there any sort of training that you're doing when morale is low to get it picked back up? Everybody goes through this shit. I'm just wondering. Yeah, for sure. I think, I think it's really, really important that your team, um, like genuinely feels that you as the leader have their best interest at heart. I think that's a really good place to start. Um, because, and you've built that really, you build relationships with your team. If you're just a service manager, like you better be, those 15 guys, you better be their dude and they better be loyal to you and they love you and they'll run through a wall for you. That doesn't happen overnight. It takes time. It takes intentionality. It takes purpose so that when those tough moments do happen, it's not about going in, you know, getting me a sale or whatever on the next call. It's, it's, we can talk on a much more personal level and you know, my, my tips or, or my coaching isn't just because I need revenue today. It's because I genuinely care about you and, and your kids and your wife and what, what it is that you're trying to work for every single day. And, and that's what's coming out in my coaching to help you uh, improve your quality of life, not because the company needs, needs revenue today. And I think there's a lot of technicians out there that feel like they're just a number or they're just a chess piece and their managers or their owners or whatever are just moving chess pieces all day. And that's the quickest way to make a business, like make those guys feel like it's every man for themselves. And um, when it's, it's, here's the thing. If, if you as the leader give more than you take, right. In support, encouragement, and when they need help in any way, shape or form, if we're always looking to help and give and give and give, then, what are they going to turn around and do with their customers? They're going to, they're going to, they're going to do the same thing and they're going to give great service, but we have to model that behavior as the leadership team. Right. And if we don't, if it's just take, 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 eventually 
that bank account's going to run empty. And, and then now you're going to take one too many times. And, and that's where I see morale going sideways in, in businesses is, is people just feel like they're just pawns on a chessboard. And I try to make it and starting with my leadership team and them with their teams is, is we're partners in this thing. We're partners. And, but we always have to, you know, we have to look in the mirror and say, okay, am I, am I taking more than I'm giving? Right. And typically there's your answer. If, if morale's down or if there's a guy on the team that's acting out in some way, shape or form or refusing a call or, or not willing to, to pick up when the team needs it, it's more of a, it's more of a reflection of our service as leaders than it is, than it is him, if that makes sense. Yeah. So you're looking at what's your responsibility in it. Yes. Yeah. Like what's my, okay. Got it. Yeah. Where this has come up. So I hope that answers the question. No, it it does. So, so then, and then I'm going to, and then I'm going to move on. I'm just, I'm always, the reason I ask that question is like, there's probably a lot of listeners right now who are going through that variation. And you know what, maybe it's some of the listeners employees are just a number to them and that's the problem. Yeah. And and it could even be unintentional. It's just that they're wearing multiple hats and it's like, no, it's, it's just, Hey, you need to pump the brakes and then stop and look at like, what's your part in this. Mm. Um, And could you be doing, you know, more and, I say that because I'm giving everybody the bailout, right? Of saying like you, maybe you just are doing like, it's not that you don't care. It's just that you haven't focused on it because of other things. Yeah. It's easy. By to the way, yeah. And by the way, it happens, especially in, you know, we'll call it shoulder seasons or if business is slow. Um, or, or if you're, if you're growing, if you're trying, if you're scaling and, and sometimes the bigger you get, the less, the less it feels like a family, the less it feels like a partnership because now you're, you know, we're all driven, motivated people. We're trying to hit goals and targets and all that stuff. And it's easy to, uh, it's easy to forget about the individual person out there serving your client every day. Yeah, man, it's, you, you can't do that at a certain size yourself. You have to rely on your leadership to be able Mm -hmm. to create those things. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I think about just, you know, my own journey and the things I used to be able to do that versus what I could do now. Like, and as you're saying a few things, I'm sitting there just trying to reflect on like, yeah. where did I miss? Um, and because I do have good intentions it's like, Ooh, man, but some, but I'm also ADHD. So like, there's some shit I forget about, right? <laughs> it's not because I don't care. It's just that I can only like focus on one thing at a time. Um, so, so I'm going to, I'm going to shift gears for, for just a second. And thanks for answering that question. I'm to me, that stuff is important. And, and I just want everybody else to hear, like, you know, I think the most valuable thing that you just said is, you know, it, maybe it is, maybe it is their issue, right? Maybe it's not, maybe it's not coachable and you've tried, but maybe, maybe you do have some, some part in that. So just, that's what I want you to hear listeners is like, maybe take a step back and think about what you've, uh, you know, maybe what your part has been in that situation. That's it. That's all. Can I just add one more thing? Cause I, th- I think it's really, really important is I truly believe that every single person on my team ha- has great intentions, wants to be great and wants to do the right thing. And there's greatness inside of them. And it's our job to, to extract that and to get them to evidence and show that. And, and, um, and sometimes it's easy to have like a cynical view of, oh, that guy, he's lazy or this or that, the other. And that's what that's what come, that's what leadership is all about is is everybody needs a coach. You know, going back to my coaching background, I had coaches growing up when I was playing that got more out of me than I would if I didn't have anybody investing into me or even yelling at me when they need to yell at me or whatever it was even the best athletes, the best, whoever it is, everybody needs a coach, right? And it's the coach's job to get that person to perform the best that they can. And, um, but it starts with your belief as a leader, you have to believe that every single one of your people want to do what's right. They want to be great. They want, they have big whys, they have, they have big motivations and it's our job to, to get that. Now, once you, you look in the mirror and you train and you try and you try again and you make sure they're trained properly and they understand if they still don't want it, then you can only do so much. Right. But, but I, I think a lot of times we get to the, we don't even get to that point because we just, uh, he, we, we just, we want a bunch of people that are, that can self-service and, and just go be freaking on their a, a game every single day with needing no, no help you know, kind of self-sufficient. And 
there's very few people out there that are like that. Do you, do you think that you guys are finding those people from outside or are you incubating some of that internally for people who aren't managers, but you can tell like they kind of got like they could, there's some good potential for them to be in management. Like you see something in them or yeah. sorry, are you, is this a mixture of both? Do you kind of incubate that internally? How's that working? Uh, I would say mo most of it's internally. It's, it's having the right people with the right drive and motivation, but more importantly to me, having the right heart. Um, if you don't have the right heart, you can't lead for me. You can't lead for us. If you don't care about people, if you don't love people, if you're not always, you know, looking to serve, like then you're just a manager. Well, and, then not, if you, so this is part of your culture. Like that's yes. why you, yeah. Okay. So, so these are the things that you're hiring for Yes. already. Okay. Yeah. And then in, here's the thing internally, if we model what we're preaching, it's not just words on a wall. If we model that as leadership, now we inspire people to want to be leaders in the organization. And there's people that say, Hey, I want to, I want, how do I become a manager? Because they see this place as a place that they want, they can grow and develop and thrive in and take their career to the next level. But there's a lot of people in a lot of businesses right now. They're like, shoot, I don't want that job. That dude looks stressed all the time. He's freaking mad all the time. He's, you know, his door is always closed, blah, blah, blah. Like, I don't want that. I'll just take my three calls a day and go home and turn off my phone. Right. But when, when, I think when, when, if you lead in a certain way that you care about people and, and you create a culture and, and lives change, people want to be a part of that too. Right. But they have to see it to, to be inspired, to get out of their comfort zone and want to, you know, take their career to the next level. And, yeah. and fortunately we've been able to do some of that. Yeah. You can't just, and it, yeah, it just can't be words that you say that's actually the worst case scenario is you say them and then don't do them or you say, <laughs> them, say them and then half ass it. And then nobody's bought in to you because you're not being genuine about it. And, and like, again, the intent could have been right. Yes. But you didn't like, but you maybe were unorganized and how you did it. It was, it wasn't part of the foot. Like who knows, but mm -hmm. man, you cannot, you can't say as a leader, you're going to do something then not do it. That's a quick way to lose their respect you know, and, and trust of people that you're trying to, to lead. You're right. And people can tell, man, people can tell if, you know, what you're saying and what you're doing isn't lining up, you know, uh, people can tell. And, and, you know, I always say your, your actions broadcast your deepest beliefs. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, I can say whatever we can, we can put whatever on the wall. But what we truly believe about people and what we truly, you know, what we stand for and what our mission is will we'll be broadcasted through our actions. So. Did you say actions broadcast your deepest beliefs? Is yeah, that your, da your daily actions broadcast your deepest beliefs. Got it. Okay. So, so what's interesting is we've talked so much about um, leadership uh, soft skill type stuff, um, culture, like, uh, managing through, or, you know, lead, managing through chaos, like, you know, grit, you know, mental fortitude. We talk about all these things. Are there, um, like business also does really well sometimes too, right? So it's not like we're kind of talking through a bunch of hardship and I did kind of want to focus on the hard stuff, right? I did want to do that. Yeah. But, but you know, you probably have some like tailored training programs, uh, um, for all, like I'm assuming all kind of scenarios. So whether it be soft skills, training, technical training, like, because it's not always chaos, do you have like a, a normal regiment for, for training for basically any, like any of the different um, departments? Yeah, we do. We have, you know, a weekly meeting schedule set, set days and times um, where, you know, they're, they're, that specific manager is, is working on certain things, the needs of the team, um, the bigger teams we break up based off skill level or needs. Um, and really, you know, we have a, uh, we have a daily huddle meeting as a leadership team in our business where, you know, it's kind of a snapshot of yesterday and what the plan is today. And, um, but we pull a lot of information and, you know, numbers, 
numbers are important, but again, it goes back to the behavior. So if one of the department managers is struggling with their maintenance closing rate, we can have a discussion as a, as a leadership team. Okay, what's being done about that? What's on your training plan? Where do you think they're missing? And a lot of times if you're on the phone with your guys all day and you hear what they're getting caught up on, now you can organize their training plan around that. And that's generally, but then really where, where you get real and where you see a lot of impact is, is the one-on-ones. You know, because everybody has different needs. There's some blanket trainings and stuff that benefits everybody and that people need reminders or need to hear. But it's the one on ones where you really figure out, OK, how can I specifically help this this guy? And uh, and I think when you're doing one on ones frequently enough, not because you have to, but because you want to, you genuinely want to connect. You genuinely want to help. It's not a beat up session. It's a it's let's go to the next level session. And, um, and if your people look forward to those one-on-ones, now their hearts are softened and their, their minds are open to, to the, uh, to the coaching. And, and now when they start to grow and benefit and, and their lives start to change as a result of that, now you just, it just snowballs. And then now they're telling people on the team, Hey, I, I had a one-on-one with Brian or with Matt or with Josh or whoever on the team. And this is how this is how you've seen me improving. Now other people, hey, when can I get a one on one? I, I want some of your time. And for me, I'd rather do that stuff than be on conference calls and other crap. I'd rather be one on one with guys, helping them win and change changing their their quality of life. How how frequently are you, do you think you do the one on ones, or would you recommend doing one on ones? Um, you know, it's 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 different. I I think the uh, ever everybody's different on the team. I think if you try to structure it too much, then it now just becomes a have to on your, on your thing. I have some guys on my team that, that, you know, you maybe only have to do a quarterly kind of check in They're They're self-driven, they're motivated, they're, they're mentally tough. Um, and they just make, make more phone touch bases. I think, um, I think the, uh, the younger guys, the guys who are newer, they need more, right? And there's three types of coaching. I, I when, just in my mind, I think there's there's coaching to correct. So you're seeing things in the data. You're seeing things. You know, I always uh, with my leadership team, I want them going through every call and service titan, looking at are the guys taking pictures, are they leaving estimates, what are, what's their quality of their notes. You can find so much about that, right? And and, and you can kind of you know, what I used to do is I'd have a page in my notebook for every guy. And I would just make notes about, Hey, this guy needs to do better here, here, there. And then, so in the, in the one-on-ones you can coach to correct. And then some of it's coaching to commend, right? Hey, you're doing really, really good at this. How can we, this is kind of your niche or this is where you're doing good. How can we, how can we magnify that? How can we get more out of what you're already good at. And then, and then some people just need a coaching to connect. They just don't want to connect, right? They're probably a little bit higher level guys. And, and, and it's good to, to, to have those touch bases and those connections. Some of that's just like, Hey dude, let's meet for coffee before your first call tomorrow. Or, Hey, let's grab lunch between your first and your second call. And um, so there's, uh, there's three different, I guess, kind of groups of guys that, you know, the coaching to correct needs more often. The coaching to connect probably need less often. Um, it, you know, I don't, I don't think there's a one size fits all schedule there. Okay. So, um, and what I, what I was asking that question was, um, as you were kind of talking through like those one-on-one scenarios where people were like, Oh, when do I get my one-on-one? Um, it must've been a positive one-on-one. Yeah. <laughs> First off. Well, yeah, you've got, you know, an emotional, you know, that you've got some emotions, some feelings wrapped up in that. Um, and that can be one, like if it, if you, if it's more of like a have to, well, that already comes in with a negative feeling, mm-hmm. you know, like I have to do this thing. And sometimes that is what it is. Like we, we over meeting stuff. Like I was in one today, oh. I was in an hour long meeting today. that should have been 30 minutes. Yeah. Perfect. And I knew it at 45 minutes in and I was just thinking, how can I shut this thing down and it not, and not sound like an asshole. Uh, but I didn't, 
uh, I should, and I should have, but it was just one of those deals where I was like, I don't want to have to be in a situation where it's like, okay, I, once I'm kind of done, I'm not even thinking about what the meeting is about anymore. I'm just thinking about why am I still doing this? Um, I already have what needed from it. So then I had to take a step back and say, Chris, what was your position in, in this? I could have shut it down, but I did not because I didn't want to hurt somebody's feelings. Now this yeah. was an external person calling out. So it wasn't as easy if it was in my own staff, but um, but here's what I want to ask. And I, and I think we're getting close to like 45 minutes into this thing. So I want to ask, oh, there was actually three questions, but I'm not gonna have time for three. So I had to like pick, I had to pick a couple here. Um, the, you know, we talked a lot about, you know, we're how to coach and lead our team, our teams. Um, but what about yourself? Like, what do you, what are you doing to coach yourself? Because you have to do that too. And, and you said one thing that, that uh, Ken Goodridge said on the podcast a few weeks ago about, you know, sitting in your call centers or sitting and listening to your phone calls, you'll learn a lot about what the business needs and the challenges and you can, you know, do some things from there. Mm -hmm. And um, which I thought was great because think about that just by listening to these, you know, your, your call, not, not just call center, like all of it, listen to your yeah. stuff. So, because you should probably, you'll probably hear some consistent things to give you, you know, an idea. It's just, you got to sit and do it. That's the hardest part. You actually sit and do it, take the time to do it. Mm. But you also got to work on yourself. And I think sometimes us as leaders um, are so busy, you know, giving to everything else that we do forget to take time, you know, for ourselves to make sure like we're coaching ourselves to get better. I know I've been victim of that. You catch yourself, you do something, you, you go right back into the pattern, you catch yourself, you do something again. But like, what are you doing to coach yourself, man? Who's coaching yeah. the coach? <laughs> I'm so glad you asked the question because I think this a this kind of a, you know, it, it can be a burden of leadership. And, uh, you know, I'm blessed with the great group of, of men uh, that I get to work with. George Donaldson is is my coach in this. Um, but also um, there's people on my team and my leadership team that uh, from day one, I give full permission to tell me the truth. And uh, I've got blind spots. You know, I'm, I'm really good at certain things and I suck at other things. Right. And so I, what I told them from day one, I tell them very, very frequently is I don't need to be told how great I am. I need to be told where I'm, where my blind spots are, what I'm missing, where, where my attention needs to be, especially, you know, we got 130 employees. I don't know everything that's going on. And, um, so I think being able to have that kind of circle of trust, quote unquote, where you've got some key people, some trusted people that have full permission to tell you the truth. And I think that's so, so valuable for me. I, you know, I, my, my sales manager, Matt Rudisol and my operations manager, Jack Bradaway and, and some other people on the team, they've got full permission. I have a, I have a, uh, a lady named Gina Moreno, who's been with the company a long time. She is the heart and soul of this business. And I give her full permission. Hey, if, if this culture, if something's going on culture wise, or that I need to be aware of that we've got to correct quickly. Like, please don't let it become a problem. Tell me. Um, and she's really, really good at that. And so I think that's big in, in terms of work, right? And then the outside of work, um, you know, a lot of personal and self-development. I'm always listening to a podcast, audio book, um, always looking to just continue to feed myself uh, leaders are learners, right? And if I'm going to ask my team to learn, I've got to be learning along with them. And then, you know, going to church, you know, my pastor, I get so much good stuff from my pastor that that's just universal. Um, whether you're a believer or not, um, just the way he leads our church and the way that he pastors our, our congregation and, and the messages that he brings every week just feeds me as well. And it helps me keep my head on straight and, and lead the way that I want to lead. Cause ultimately it comes down to like, why are we doing this? Is it, I'm not going to remember how much we sold yesterday, you know, a month from now, I'm not going to remember how much revenue I did this year or that year or whatever. But what I will remember are the lives that have been changed and the people that we've impacted and, 
and all the things, the great things that people would do that have done and the relationships that we've built, like that's what gets me out of bed every morning. And so, uh, trying to surround myself with people with, the, with that same heart and that same mentality. And, you know, in my position, I can get off course with that too. Cause you know, I'm, you can have back-to-back conference calls or you're reporting numbers all day and we've got these targets and that and having to filter that, you know, from leading up and then having to lead down. And those are two different things. And being able to do that is, is, is really, really important. But it's the people around me that remind me why I, why I do this every day. And my wife, I'll tell you this, the importance of, of having a coach at home. You know, I, I believe that, uh, you know, God gave us a spouse, not for comfort, not for pleasure, although th- those things are there. But God gave us a spouse to help us build our character. And you have someone that knows you better than anybody that's in, in your home, that, that knows you inside and out, that can shine a light on, on where, you're, where you're messing up. Can call you on your, on your BS. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We all need it. Right. And some, sometimes at home, we don't want that. But if you look at, if you look at marriage as, Hey, yeah, I mean, we've got a beautiful marriage and we've got a beautiful kids and a beautiful family. My wife is my very best friend, but my wife also tells me what I need to hear when I need to hear it. She has no problem doing that. And I love her for it. Is is as hard as it may be sometimes to be able to have that sounding board at home when when I can vent or have frustrations, I'm trying to figure out how I should approach certain things. To have that sounding board that I can bounce certain things off of that's not going to coddle me or tell me what I want to hear, but tell me the truth and love. And um, th- that's so valuable. It- it's I-, I can't tell you enough. Yeah. And, and that alone, if you took that, you know, if you took that kind of mentality into work and kind of tried to lead the same way where you're not afraid to, you know, you're not looking at confrontation as a negative. It's, it's, it's sometimes you're going to have uncomfortable conversations, but it's a pot that those actually, when we learn some of our best lessons is in the uncomfortable moments where you have to have a hard conversation. They learn something about themselves. You learn something about yourself on how did you deliver the information? Could have it done better? Like, and then they're going to receive it a certain way. At least if you come in with like raw, real, uh, genuine care to help in that situation, like that's going to come out, I think, yes. um, in, a, in a very authentic, natural way, because that's what you're you're trying to be. And and listen, I was just talking with a uh, one of our new employees today, and I said, um, you know, what I want you to be able to, what I want you to to do is feel very comfortable making mistakes because you are going to make mistakes, and I also want you to be very comfortable owning those really fast, so that way we can figure out a solution faster, you know, rather than trying to work around it just to find out that you, you did make the mistake. And now we got, now, now there's a weird trust issue. Like let's just bypass all that because I'm telling you, you're going to make mistakes. We already know it. We wouldn't have hired you if we didn't believe in you. Yes. So, so let's, you know, and, and just trying to make it to where it is a little easier. Cause that comes in, right? Like no matter what you say, like people feel, they don't want to let anybody down. Yeah. So you make mistakes. You just gotta, you own them. And I respect that like so much more when that happens and with your wife, you know, like there's no question if you make a, if you make a mistake, there's a conversation about it. <laughs> and I've learned, I've come to uh, respect it. Yes. But I had to learn how to receive that kind of, you know, feedback, you know, and, and tur- turn it into a positive. That does, people don't just get that. Some people just get defensive or get mad even, you know, and it's like, Oh, I'm nagging. It's not nagging. It depends on how you look at it. Maybe somebody's nagging. I don't know, but yeah. <laughs> saying, you know, but if you're, if you're giving like good constructive feedback to a human being who needs it in an uncomfortable situation, you're doing a good job. Yes. You know what job. it comes down to is it comes down to trust. If I trust that you have my best interest at heart, I'm going to receive that information differently than if I don't. Right. And whether that's at home, whether that's with partners, whether that's with, with the people in your business, um, if there is a high level of trust that, hey, we both got each other's back. We both have each other's best interests. Now we can have honest conversations without fear of retaliation, without fear of getting the cold shoulder tomorrow, without fear of any of that, because we're all, we all want to go the same direction. We all have each other's best interests at heart. Yeah, that's fantastic. 
That's exactly what it is. It, there's that fear. Like, let's remove that piece. And yeah. and it does come, you know, by way of, of trust. And of course your actions, you know, doing, doing what you say you will do Yes, um, on both ends, by the way. Yes. Um, well, listen, man, like I, uh, you know, it, I know that sometimes it's like, oh man, is there going to be any value in a, another leadership podcast? And there is, um, this particular episode around leadership is like, you know, I, I try to be, I try to be a little bit selective on when I put out a certain episode about a certain topic based to, you know, based upon the time of year or whatever might be happening or whatever, you know, usually I got a pretty good feel for what people need to, to hear. It's been four years of, I think four years of me doing this podcast. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, so, but right now is in that moment where people are probably having, you know, some of these businesses listening right now are probably having a little bit of a rough go. Um, and, and maybe what it is, is, you know, it's just time to maybe take a look in the mirror, you know, and, and see like, what is, you know, what's, what's your part in this play? Um, is there something that you can change? And my hope was bring on Brian, he's done it, came from a head coaching position, you know, young, it, just different, a different perspective, you know, and that's what I hope to bring is just a different perspective on how to look at things. And you lean heavy into the heart side of it. Um, you know, the genuinely care side of it, the, and, and you know, you, uh, you know, when you talk about reading a book or going to church, you're, it's, it's how, however you get your, your message is how you get your message. You know, I do both. I, I get, I like, I listen, I still get up and I, um, I'm journaling in the morning. I'm still reading the Bible verse every morning and I don't even understand some of them. So I got to actually read the Bible to figure out what the heck the message is trying to tell me. Um, uh, and then I try to figure out like, you know, in business, you know, is there something else I can apply there? Like that's one. If I'm reading a book, if you read, if I read too many books, I I don't do this, but if I, I know a couple people do, if you read too many books, you, you almost don't try one, you don't try anything. You read so much stuff that you kind yeah. of forget which one that you stuck on. So you got to be thoughtful in how you're receiving information and what you're actually doing with it. Just like this podcast, mm. right? take one, two, three, you know, three things away from this thing and just go try and implement that, you know, and just kind of make that, that the focus. And maybe that's something is you, the listener, like maybe that's you that you're focusing on. Go look in the mirror and just say, Hey man, X, Y, Z is happening. What's my part in it. It's going to be weird when you do it for the first time, by the way, when you look at yourself in the mirror and ask that question to yourself with nobody around, it's going to feel weird. hundred percent. And really it comes down to, you know, why are you doing this? If it's just for money, if it's just so you can, you know, get to X, Y, and Z so you can exit. If that's your true motivation, your people know. They might not know specifics, but they know where your heart is, right? And, but if you're, if you're truly in this to positively impact the quality of life of the people that, that God's given you to under your influence, people know that too, and they can feel it. And so that's really what it comes down to in my I mean opinion. I love it. I appreciate you coming on here and sharing your time and sharing your heart and your passion for coaching and leading and training. And like I said, you know, I'd heard from, you know, George too, just about like, he clearly is, is a champion uh, of yours. Right. And, uh, um, and, and it's because you've, you've done it time and time again and you lead, you know, you're a true servant leader. Um, and uh, I just wanted people to be able to hear your story. You can hear what you guys have done. And, um, and so I appreciate you coming on and doing that. Thank you so much for having me. I hope uh, hope I was able to add something to this. Happy to help any way, shape, or form. I appreciate it, brother. And this was your first one. So now you've yeah. successfully completed your first uh, podcast. <laughs> so I guarantee you, mark my words, that others will that listen to this one when we post it will reach out to, to ask you to do the same thing. So just uh, be ready for that, buddy. All right. Happy to help. <laughs> All right. To our listeners, hopefully, again, you were able to take something away from this too, you know, and maybe it's, you know, just, to think about like, what can I do that has the biggest impact? That's something that Brian said right up front was just having an impact. Well, whatever that impact is for you, uh, whatever your why is for you, whatever your purpose is for you, whatever it is, you know, you just do something, right? You, you have lots of tools that you can do, whether it's listening to podcasts, reading the books, going to church, you know, having good leaders, whatever it is. Uh, if you need some help, go ask for it. You know, there, there is no reason that you can't find a solution to whatever your problem is with all the mass media that we have out there and options that you have to learn from like zero reason. The only reason would be is you didn't try. That's it. But you're listening to the podcast. So you're doing something right. You don't have to do everything, but you got to do something. No zero days.